Why? I mean, what, what's going on now? Um, I'll feed you. I'll feed you for gifts. She got a funny happy hour. For the press conference with the Asian American media, uh, we will start about one or two minutes later. So thank you for your patience. Thank you for many labor leaders for your solidarity. Today is a busy day, but I think it's good. Many people are concerned about this. And then we are very being motivated by our young leaders. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Thank you, labor leaders, for joining us. Thank you, Mariana. Thank you, Mariana. And the County Federation of Labor. Oh, thank you very much for coming to today's press conference with the Asian American media. 오늘 이렇게 와주셔서 감사드리고요. 어, past weeks, uh, our heart were torn apart as we watch thousands of young children and moms walk miles of miles to escape from poverty and violence, also to be reunited with their families living in the United States. But they were detained, and the way they were treated were very bad. But also we are very sad that some people with hate and with mean spirit, they were telling to these children, go back to your country, you're not welcome here. We have to build more war on the border. But I'm very excited to introduce you many committed and brave our young leader. They are committed to make a sacrifice because they want other people to know more about this as a humanitarian crisis and this is about children's issue and this is not about politics. And they want to feel connected to other children who are in me. Today is their third day of fasting. Every day, every hour, every minute, their energy level goes down and they feel weaker by every minute. But your support and your presence will make them stronger and will make them be united and we, because they believe in something. So I just wanted to kind of introduce, let's give, a, give them a big hand. Today is a press conference to really send a message out to the Asian American community. 
when it comes to children, it doesn't matter whether you are Asian, Latino, African American, white, we are all together. We care about children and we are standing in solidarity with many children who are seeking for support, who are pursuing a dream, the same dream that our ancestors and we have pursued. So today, I'd like to introduce uh, Simon John, one of the uh, Asian American Youth Faster. Uh, he will share why he decided to fast. And my story begins in 1997. The, there was a huge financial crisis that spread across the Southeast Asia countries, and South Korea was one of the countries that was hit very hard. And because of the financial crisis, it was hard for my family to make ends meet day in, day out. And in 2001, we decided to come to America and overstay our visa so that my sister and I could pursue the American dream and live a life that my parents wish for us to live out. And there's a lot of reasons why I'm here fasting with my brothers and sisters. One of the reasons is, you know, there are people in the previous generation that fought for the rights that I have right now, the privileges that I enjoy, like having a DACA, having a license. You know, that didn't happen overnight. It happened through countless years of people fighting for the rights that I now enjoy. And I'm here to, you know, fight for the upcoming generations that are coming across the border to pursue the dream that I had when I first came here to America. The second reason is, you know, these are kids that we're talking about. They're not criminals. They have done nothing wrong. All they have done is come to America so that they can escape the poverty and the violence that they're living, that, that's happening in their country. And they can't even call that the place that they were born a home because it's not safe anymore. They're just, you know, they're just coming here so that they can have a better life and you know pursue the dream that I had. And it's just unfair that it's just unfair that you know just because they're born in Central America, you know they're not labeled as a modern minority. You know they're not like welcomed as I was as a South Korean. And that is why I'm here today to you know fight for the rights to fight for their rights for them to stay and you know to show compassion because all they're getting here right now is hate and just racist remarks and telling them to go back and they're labeled as disease to the society and they just kiss you know, they just they just fleeing violence and you know sorry it's very very hard and uh, yeah you know, I just want to show compassion and just fight in solidarity and you know just lift the hunger that they felt when they were crossing their border and just I just want to do as much as I can to share their suffering and fight for their rights. Thank you. We also have a uh, someone home. Uh, he's a Korean American youth. He's also here to show his solidarity and support for the children. Someone. Hi, my name is Hongwon, and I'll be speaking in Korean. Uh, 안녕하세요. 저, 저는 어, 홍성원이라고 하고요. 지금은 인종학교라는 비영리 단체에서 올 썸머 동안 인턴 활동을 하고 있습니다. 어, 제가 왜 이런 그 금식 활동을 하게 됐냐면은 저도 이제 미국에 이민자로 온 사람으로서 그리고 또이 아이들한테 이런 일이 생긴다는 거를 나는 처음에 접했을 때 되게 마음이 안 좋았어요. 그래서 되게 제가 해줄 수 없, 그러니까 나이도 어리고 이제 고등학교 아니 고등학교 졸업하고 이제 다 대학생이 됐는데 이제 어린 나이로서 이렇게 아이들을 위해서 해줄 수 있는 게 없더라고요. 그래서 되게 고민을 많이 하고 있었던 차에 제가 일하는 이제 민족학교로 이제 야밀렉스가 이런 이벤트가 있다고 해서 어 이제 
이런 이벤트를 이제 소개하기 위해서 이렇게 왔는데 하게 돼가지고 이제 저도 이제 참가하게 됐고요. 그리고 어, 생활하는 거 별로 크게 진짜 먹고 물 많이 마시고 이제 화장실 많이 왔다 갔다 하고 있습니다. 네. 원 and I'm an intern at Korean Research Center and the reason why I'm participating is because when I first heard about this issue and seeing all those photos of um, how poorly the children are treated I felt really um, I felt really sad because you know there's nothing I could do for these children and while I was just feeling sad um, Yama Lai came to the organization I was interning in and she introduced this program and, and yeah, I asked DJ if I could join it and that's how I got involved in this, in this movement and I'm really happy to be part of this and I just hope that um, our action will bring more awareness and motivate other people to join. Thank you. Thank you. We also have many great committed youth leader. Today I was talking to Yanyo's sister, she's a nine years old. And today is her second day of fasting. I asked her, she's nine years old, are you okay? But she's saying that I'm fasting for my brother. It really touched my heart. And they are our leader. And they're the one who's gonna you know, show the world this is about people's issue. This is about human rights. This is not about politics. But also, on behalf of other youth faster, maybe one person just kind of uh, tell us how it has been and what it was like past today. Oh, yeah, minute. So, um, thank you so much for being. I recognize familiar faces from Washington. Um, you know, uh, it was crazy because I came to DJ. It was like a few days, like we only had a few time to plan this. And I came to DJ and I was like, I want you to be a part of this. DJ has been a, one of my biggest inspirations. And it truly means a lot that he didn't question me when I said I wanted to do something for these children. DJ um, and Song and um, Simon have had my back from the start and it truly means a lot that our Korean brothers are here for us and you know um, it has been a little difficult for some of us you know it some of us have never really fasted for this long but the fact that we are sacrificing ourselves for these children and we're trying to spiritually connect with them and feel what they're feeling in those detention centers really means a lot and the fact that our brothers um, came to us you know and decided to fast with us truly means a lot because, you know, um, other teens prefer to be doing something else, but they decided to not doubt us and just say, yes, we're going to do it with you, and thank you. That's what sh unity shows, that, you know, it doesn't matter where we're from, doesn't matter if we're African American, Latinos, or Koreans, that we have that unity that we need. And that's what we're here to show. Thank you. Thank you. In Vietnamese, we say, in Vietnamese, we say, Pukwa, 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 Pukwa. Yes, we can. Also, uh, tomorrow, many Asian American organizations, we are urging our community, show your support for our children. So we are calling uh, Asian American Solidarity one day or one meal fast tomorrow. Uh, and then, Today we have many other Asian American representatives here, Kiwa, uh, and then AJCLA are here, and I think they're gonna uh, present a solidarity message to our youth and our community. Betty, and then after Betty, Kiwa. Asian Americans Advancing Justice Los Angeles and I just want to say that I have the utmost respect for all of you for your courage 
for sending the message loud and clear that this is about children, this is not about politics, and that this is really about the humanity and dignity of each and every person, all of the children from Central America. So please, let's all join again in really thanking and honoring these youthful ambassadors. with the children, the tens and thousands of children who are fleeing persecution and violence in Central America. This is a humanitarian crisis that really is a test of our values as a nation and as a state. The United States is supposed to be a country of immigrants and refugees that welcomes everyone from around the world who seeks a better life. And so how we treat these children from Central America is a test of our values as a nation and as a state. We as Asian Americans have so much in common with other immigrant and refugee communities, including the children from Central America. We remember our history. Until 1952, Asians could not be U.S. citizens. We were not allowed to become citizens in this country until the law changed in 1952. And it was not until 1965, at the height of the Civil Rights Movement, that people from Asian countries were even allowed to immigrate here. And if we think about the, the people from Asia who also have come to the U.S. as refugees, as asylees, Think about Vietnam and those who fled the war in Vietnam and came to the U.S. as refugees. Those who fled Cambodia and the genocide there. And even more recently, according to the Migration Policy Institute, the country with the largest number of refugees coming to the U.S. in recent years is Burma in Asia. And the country from which the largest number of people have been granted asylum in the United States is China. Nearly one third of the individuals granted asylum in the U.S. in 2011 were from China. And so Asian Americans, we also have fled persecution and violence and have been welcomed to the U.S. Why should the children from Central America not also be welcomed? This is a humanitarian crisis. We must welcome them, we must provide the resources and ensure that the existing laws are help. Existing law requires that these children have their day in court. But there are those who have been calling to reverse the 2008 law and to expedite deportations of these children. That is absolutely unacceptable. That would be a, an immoral act that would also roll back existing laws. So we as a community must stand up for the rights, the human rights and the legal rights of children who are refugees and asylees from Central America. And so I ask all of you, and I urge the Asian American community also, to fast in solidarity tomorrow. I will be fasting as well, but we must stand loud, we must stand strong and united, that we are a community that welcomes children, and that we are a community that welcomes those who, who seek refuge and safety. And I just want to end with, with reminding everyone that why is this a humanitarian crisis? We have to look at what the children are fleeing from in Central America. Honduras is the murder capital of the world. They have the highest murder rate of any country worldwide. And El Salvador and Guatemala are also in the top five. So the three countries from which these children are fleeing are in the top five countries with the highest murder rates in the entire world. So if, we, if the U.S. sends them back, they will be sent back to the likelihood of death. So we stand strong, we stand united, and in solidarity with the youth, and remember that these are children, that it's not about politics. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bailey. Uh, someone from Kiwa, can you say a solidarity message to our youth? No, vine preparado para platicar y no, simplemente estamos aquí en Corea eh, Town Inland Workers Havana y estamos nada más para, para 
support uh, para apoyar el trabajo que ustedes están haciendo, especialmente ustedes. Estamos muy orgullosos de ustedes. Qué buen trabajo. Gracias. Thanks so much, Omar. Why do you say that? He's a worker from Kiwa, and he said he wasn't prepared to speak, but he said that he's very um, proud of what we're doing, and he's very fortunate to be here and be able to share this experience with all of us. Okay. Oh, we have a last speaker, uh, Esther, uh, from Korean Resource Center. I think she's going to talk about many ways. Many ways we can be uh, supporting our youth and many children who are in detain. Youth and young adults have themselves the incredible sacrifice, and um, there are just a, a couple ways that the rest of our community members can get involved as well. First, um, we invite everybody to join the Solidarity Fest for one meal or for one day tomorrow. That's Thursday, July 24th. Um, recruit others to join as well. You can also send encouraging messages to the Youth Fasters through Yamla at her email at yrustrian30 at gmail.com. And also uh, visit the website that's fastingforchildren.org. And if you're local in the Southern California area, feel free to come uh, visit the tent, visit the Fasters, um, talk to them, get to know them. Um, that's 115 Paseo de la Plata, Los Angeles, right here in the Um The children who... Uh, the children are also in need of different materials such as clothing, toys, anything like that. So if you have any materials that you'd like to donate, feel free to do that as well. And they're co collecting items here at the tent. And then if you're not in Southern California, but you would like to contribute somehow, they're also taking uh, monetary donations at um, immigrantsandiego.org. Uh, thank you so much. I think many individuals, they are available for one-on-one -on -one, uh, interview. And thank you so much for your concern and your support. Uh, as an immigrant, you know, I grew up hearing, hearing a lot of, you know, go back to your country, to me. But I vision, I believe, the future that we live, our young people live, I think with, because of their great leadership and their heart, I think we're going to hear more, more of welcome to our country and this is our home. So thank you very much for here and thank you very much our brothers and sisters for the sacrifice. Thank you.